In 1916, in the heart of the Kaiser's Germany, were prisoners of war for whom the iron heel of submission was intolerable. This is the story of one such man. No, no. I don't want to go. Jin, it's the escape. The big escape. No, no. Who oh, will look at this house leave? Dusty. 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 Time to go. Go. The escape. It's on tonight. Look. You go. <laughs> I've got this terrible cold. I can't seem to shake it off. Don't you want to get back to Blighty? See Nora and the kids? Yes, obviously, but I don't want to go back all sneezing and snuffling. I have to go straight to bed. Phipps was a legend among prisoners in the First World War. He had attempted over 560 escapes, 200 of them before he left England. <laughs> On arrival in Germany, he escaped regularly every day and twice a day at weekends. And so it was on June the 4th, 1917, after escaping six times in one day, Phipps found himself being taken by the Germans to the most notorious prison camp of all. Where are you from? Uh, Rygate. Ah, yes. Know it well. I'm a Dorking man myself. Ah, yes. Do you know the eel and partridge? No, no, I don't. Have a cigarette. Oh, a cigarette. A nice little pub. Dunk, dunk. Oh, just outside Banstead. Do you know? The barman there has this amazing. Ah! 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 Anyway, the 
barman at the Eel and Partridge has this incredible old dog, Benji. Do you know what he can do? No. No. He's the only dog, and I kid you not, the only dog I've ever known who can drink six pints of beer and sing Lily of Laguna. Now, honestly, I swear as God's my witness, Phipps, I've seen that dog totally pissed, sing all four verses, and with his foot. Mark you... <laughs> Major Phipps attempted to escape nine more times on that fatal journey, it seemed that at last the Germans had broken the soul of this hardened escaper. <coughs> For now he was at the gates of Stalag Luft 112B, the most prestigious prisoner of war camp of all. The finest British officers were here and there was a waiting list of several years to get in. <laughs> No, 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 no. Up on the note. Up. Once more. Nicholson and Major Phipps. How do you do? I'm... What are you doing in here? What? How dare you come in here? This is British sovereign territory. You know that damn well. We was delivering prisoners. You are not delivering prisoners. You are delivering British officers. And when you deliver British officers, you wait outside the door until a member of the arrivals committee, being in previous receipt of an allocation form signed by your commandant, comes to receive them. Listen, who's winning the bloody war? <laughs> dare you use language like that in front of a British officer? Get on my wick or this. You're supposed to be prisoners. You come here because you got captured. Because you're not very good at fighting. And now we get all it. You see that man over there? That's Captain Walcott. He won two DSOs and made a single-handed night attack that destroyed four German positions. Over there, Sergeant Major Errol. The first of the Northumberland Fusiliers over the top at Mons. Archie Tucker, Lieutenant Tucker to you, commander of the first ship to break the North Atlantic blockade in 1915. They still got captured. And lucky for you, they did. You might have had the French in here, or the Greeks, or the Poles. Would you rather have that than a prison camp full of some of the finest soldiers of this or any other war? <laughs> It's just not fair. Just because you haven't got the guts to get captured. I was nearly captured once. <laughs> hey, boss. Hey, what? I was standing next to a man who was captured. Oh, 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 it would have been me. Suddenly, Phipps saw his chance. While his friends were causing this diversion, he would test the so-called impregnability of Stalag Luft 112B. Thank you, Herr Attenborough. You couldn't run a bloody jumble sale, could you, Vogel? Hello, Buffy. Hello, Biffo. Hello, Sweetie. Hello, Biffo. Hello, Hello, Dumbo. Hello, Biffo. At ease, Jeb. Hello, Tosh. Hello, Smudger. 
Hello, Spiker. How's the leg? It's nearly finished, sir. <laughs> Good. Damn God. What's the matter, Chips? Feeling low? Oh, no, no, it's nothing, sir. I know, I know. I feel like that sometimes. Cigarette? Oh, yeah, I've got one somewhere, sir. Anything I can do, Chips? No, it's nothing, sir. It's just... Just that the wife's... The wife's got married. Married again, sir. Ah. Ah. Have you got any tipped? Oh, no, sir. No, just, just these, sir. I've got a cigar, but I was, I was going to save that. Ah, that'll do. Thanks. <laughs> she was everything to me, sir. Everything I ever had. <laughs> we had such good times together. Last leave was the best of all, sir. <laughs> and this. <laughs> I don't know how she could do it, sir. Where's the cigar? Oh, it's on the locker, sir, behind the photo. Ah, oh, yes, thanks. I just... I feel so helpless, sir. I want to be back there with her. But it's too late. Can't see the cigar anywhere. It's probably falling down the back, sir. Ah, fine. Oh, I've never told anyone this before, sir, but there was a time when we, we didn't get on that way, sir. The wife... My wife had an operation down there, sir. Can't see it. But afterwards, she didn't like doing it. What? She didn't like doing it for a bit, sir. Is this it? Oh, yes, that's it, sir. She sent it to me for Christmas. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so, you're on Phipps, are you? Yes, that's right, sir. I'm Harry Harcourt Badger Owen, but uh, senior ranks call me Biffo. I'm the CEO here. Got any cigarettes? No, don't smoke, sir. Prefer to keep fit. Never know when the moment might come, sir. The uh, moment? To escape, sir. Get back home. Fight the Bosch. Ah, yes. Uh, not how you feel. Uh, trouble is, this damn place is virtually impossible to get out of, ah. as I believe you learned early on. Well, I've had a few ideas since then, sir. I've started on a glider made entirely out of toilet roll holders. <laughs> ah, then... yes. You see, uh, we have a sort of uh, agreement here about escapes. We have a sort of system whereby all escape plans go to an escape committee. Oh. The committee then recommends some of them to a full session of the escape board. And whichever plan has a two-thirds majority is put to a secret ballot. And the plan with the most votes then becomes the official plan and goes to the escape plan review committee. Yes, And right. if they like it, they'll commission a feasibility study. When's the next meeting, sir? No, June the 5th. June the 5th? Yes, 3.30. But don't tell anybody. But that's four months away. <laughs> yes, well, with the trouble is with Easter coming up and then there's the start of the cricket season. But the war might be over by then. Well, let's hope not, obviously. Just, I've made a start on the fuselage. All I need is a couple of your fellows to help me with the wings. Look. God's sake, put that thing away! Hey, watch out! Shut it, you damn careful! Oh, listen, Phipps. I don't want to hear anything about escape plans except through the correct channels. Do you hear? There are 1,400 toilet rolls in there. Oh, I'm sorry, Phipps, but this is our camp and we do things our way. You bally idiots, what's the matter with you? Don't you want to escape? There's a proper way of doing things, Phipps. Like sitting on your asses till the war's over? Now, listen, Phipps. Either you play it our way, or you don't play it at all. I wouldn't play it your way. Not while there's a war to win. I'm going to escape. You hear me? I'm going to escape, even if I have to do it on my own. <laughs> you will be on your own, Major Phipps. I can assure you of that. Dear, dear Spiker. Pads out for Junior League tomorrow. Right, there, Biffo, sir. Remember, I'm going in number three this year, sir. Damn good. Cheerio, yeah, Smudger. Cheerio, yeah, Biffo. Cheerio, yeah, Puppy. Cheerio, yeah, Biffo. Cheerio, yeah, Squidgy. Cheerio, yeah, Biffo. Cheerio, Dumbo. Cheerio, yeah, Biffo. Cheerio, yeah, Biffo. Cheerio, yeah, Back, 
As the weeks went by, Major Phipps's contempt for the attitude of his fellow officers drew him into an ever-deepening isolation, as he dedicated himself night and day to the one goal of escape. Working entirely alone and with a mind obsessed with his desire for freedom, he became almost a recluse. Hardly ever speaking or communicating with his comrades as his plans neared completion. Until, after months of this solitary work, the great day arrived. I'm not supposed to be in here. Where are they? He's right, you know. We're not really meant to come in here. Shut up! If you don't tell me where they are, I'll blow your head off. But definitely not allowed to do that here on time. Listen, stop <laughs> telling me my business. Ray, what are you talking about? Them! Where have they gone? Was it a tunnel? Was it a wire job? Hmm? You mean they've, they've escaped? Of course, they've bloody escaped! <laughs> Whose side are you on? I'm on the side of justice, man, here, and legality. Christ. <laughs> now, where are your nasty little friends? Bavaka the Ain? Hey, Volker, what about the Red Cross? To hell with the Red Cross! Listen, what's the use of having a war when nobody does anything bad to each other? What's the point in a war where everyone's saying, hello, how are you? Good evening, old chap. Have some chocolate. Surely there are humanitarian considerations which are applicable even in wartime. I know. I mean, there's nothing I'd like better to give people my chocolate and say, hello, how are you? But conditions of war create an unreality which call for a different kind of moral code. Are you saying that we should abrogate our basic responsibilities for our fellow men because of some disagreement over the size of the Austrian Empire? <laughs> No, I'm saying there's a moral code which supersedes individual moral codes during the time of war. But what you're saying... Shut up! <laughs> no more argument. From now on, we run this prison camp as long as there is a war on. Do what you like. You'll never keep me in here now. Major Phipps, in this prison camp, there are over 45 highly trained, fully armed guards. If you think we can't take care of one cowardly British officer... Don't you dare call me cowardly. I've escaped more times than all of them put together. Well, this is one time that you're not going to escape. By the time I finish with this place, no one will ever escape again! <laughs> Prisoners will answer their names. Phipps. Yeah. Ali's here, mein Commandant. And now, sport. Vogel's pressure was tremendous. 
Every move Phipps made was watched and controlled by guards, working sometimes 18 or 20 hours a day. There seemed no way out. What do you want? We wondered if... What? We wondered if... you were thinking of escaping at all. I don't think I'd tell you, even if I were, do you? No, of course not. Of course not. It's just that... What? Well, if you are... We wondered if perhaps we could come with you. <laughs> You? We want to get out of here. We can't stand it any longer. What is this? You don't know what it's like. We're not happy here. <laughs> Those are making it too tough for you, eh? No. It's just that we used to have rules. We knew where we were. We knew them all off by heart. We had to, and Major Attenborough used to make sure we kept to them. Ah, yeah, he was a good sort. He'd never have allowed us in here like this. This is sovereign British territory. You can't suddenly make us do things which are not in the book. Hevogel's cancelled our leave. He's, he's put up all those lights, and now it's impossible to get out. But, Hemeo, you know the camp better than anyone. Please. Can you help us to escape? You really want me to help you escape? It's not only us. The Commandant wants to escape as well. <laughs> we have never done it before, and you're doing it so often. Please help us, Hemeo. I will never besmirch the name of my regiment and my country by collaborating with the enemy. Mayor, please help us, help us. When I escape, I will escape in my own time. Now get off my bed. Phipps went back to sleep that night, happier than for many weeks. The camp was falling apart before his very eyes. All he needed to do now was to choose his moment and affect the most spectacular escape in the history of the war. Oh, my God! It's open! I'm in no mood for the fooling, I warn you. I want to know what you've done with my 45 highly trained guards. I haven't done anything with Where them. Where are my highly trained guards? How should I know? Listen! <laughs> now, that definitely is against the regulation. Sod the regulation! <laughs> I want to know where are my 45 highly trained guards? But they said something about escaping. <laughs> yeah, they were so fed up with conditions here. They escaping? <laughs> Escaping. You must stop them at once. I'm a serving bridge officer here, Vogel. I'm afraid I can't obey your commands. All right, all right. I'm not ordering you. I'm asking you as a friend. Huh? Should a few Germans? No. Do your own dirty work, Vogel. Look, what's the point 
interested in having a war if you don't shoot Germans. That would be collaboration. Oh, my God! Bloody rules! I'm sick to death of them! I just hit the commandant. <laughs> well, what are you going to do now, Virgil? What can I do? There's only one thing I can do. I've got to escape. <laughs> For Major Phipps, this was the moment. At last, he was free. Free to complete the largest glider ever assembled inside a prisoner of war camp. Free to complete a network of tunnels so elaborate that they later became part of the Munich underground system. He built a catapult so powerful it could fling him 200 miles across occupied Europe. He was about to construct a hot air balloon using only the little bits you pull off a lastoplast before sticking it on when tragedy struck. The war was over. Major Phipps became the only man never to escape from Stalag Luft 112B. He returned home a broken man and died three months later. He was buried here in Totnes churchyard, but his body was found two years later over by the fence. Major Phipps had made his last, and perhaps greatest, escape.